peace, peace. This is Brother Kansu, Team Osiris on the Rise. What's up, Brother Kofu? Okay, the title of the work and its object, uh, the beginning of the teaching concerning life of how to live and the testimonies or admonitions of which lead to safe conduct and of the directions for behavior set forth by the high officials who had the privilege of entering the council chambers of kings and governors and of the commandments of the Sumeru, the friends of the king or high officers of state. This teaching and the precepts contained therein will enable a man to return a suitable answer to him that has spoken to him and to carry back a satisfactory report to the man who has dispatched him on a mission and will make him follow a straight course on the roads of life and will enable him to maintain his position of safety upon the earth and will cause his heart to descend or enter its case and make him steer his course away from evil or the evil one and make him deliver himself from the mouth of the common folk and to be applauded by the mouth of men of understanding. Amen Emapep titles. This teaching this teaching was made or written by the director of crops who was highly skilled and experienced in his profession, scribe of the grain of upper and lower Kemet, overseer of the barley crops, heaping up the grain to overflowing in the divine granary or granary of the netzer, officer in chief in charge of the harvest of his Lord, registrar of arable lands of the coming in of gifts or offerings as ordered by law in the great name of his majesty, custodian of the funerary memorials on the boundaries of the Aku, the ancestral spirits whose bodies were buried in a special quarter of the necropolis or merely the blessed dead in general. Column two, defender of the king and his edicts of government, performer of the office of deputy, wazir of Kim, scribe of the various grains that formed the divine offerings of all the Netaru, a lot of farms to the peasants who wished to become tenants of the royal estates, overseer of the barley crops, surveyor of supplies of grain, a supplier of the palace or tomb with stores of barley, Gurma of the town of Tini and of the town of Nifu-Ur, reporter of the town of Apu, master of the necropolis by the town of Amit and the town of Sin, master of sanctuary of Abydos, Amin Emapep, the son of Ka, Neket, whose word is true, Nifu-Ur, his son, is the little one, youngest of his children, overseer of the mysteries of the Neder Minti in the character of Kamut, bull or husband of his mother. He is the man of least account among his relatives, inductor of Unefer, inductor of Horu upon the throne of his father, watcher who is in his holy shrine. Column three, surveyor of the mother of God, inspector of the black bulls of the stable of Menti, defender of the god Menti in his sanctuary. Heru, as a speaker of truth, his name of Mayat, his real name, boy begotten by a nobleman of Ap, son of Sistrumbera, and directress of the singing of the god Shu, the goddess Tefnut, powerful of word, in the college of Haru, Usrit. With the name of the mother of Amit Imapet, the introduction of the teaching, which contains the title and object of the work, and the genealogy, and the list of offices held by its author comes to an end. The teaching itself begins with the words. He speaks the first chapter. I pray thee to lend thee thine ears. Hearken to the things that will be said by me. I pray thee to give thy mind or pay attention to the difficult matters which will be unraveled by me. The setting of them in thy heart will be advantages, will be advantages to thee and the rejection of them will be a calamity for thee. I beseech thee to deposit them in the treasury house of thy belly. Thy will enable thy heart or mind to right itself. When a gale of words is beating hard upon it, they will form a guiding support in thy tongue. If thy wilt live thy life by day, these things being in thy heart, 
that will find them beneficial in the season of adversities, trials. Column four. Thou wilt find my words to be like a treasure house of life and a source of strength and safety as long as thou art upon the earth. Second chapter. Guard thyself against plundering the poor man and from treating with harshness the destitute. Make not thy hand turn aside at the approach of an aged man, thou assuming the mouth of, of a great man. Not ever let a man be dispatched by thee on a dangerous mission when thou hast affection for him who is to carry it out. Thou shalt not inflict an injury on him that has attacked thee when thou art able to return an answer to him on thy own behalf. The worker of inequity, abandon him to the dike or river bank. His water flood he will bring upon himself. The north wind hurtle upon him will bring an end to his misery in his hour. He will be seized by the raging waters. The storm fiend will mount on high and the evil crocodiles. The fiery, hot-headed man, what is he like to thee? He shrieks. His voice soars upwards into the heights of heaven. The god Ahu stands still in his course and holds him to be an, an abomination. Column 5. Work the steering oar. We must give a passage to the wicked man. May not we become ourselves like unto him. Set up on his feet. Extend to him gladly thy hand. Commit him to the hands of God. Fill his belly with the bread cakes of thy providing. Satisfy him to the fill with drink while as he on another occasion of benefits is in the heart of the God. Idleness of the mind is speech in this case. Third chapter. Couple not together the chattering man with the devil, Tar. When thou canst pierce him in speech, idle and minus the crooked man, bow thyself to the attacker. A raging wind he rushes forth like a destroying fire among the reeds. The noisy, hot-headed man in his hour, when his rage is greatest, turn thyself aside before him. Leave the matter of him to the God who knows how to requite him. Thou wilt pass the days of thy life keeping these things in thy heart. Thy children behold them. Fourth chapter. Column six. Now, as for the noisy, hot-headed man of the house of the God or temple, he is like a large leafy tree planted in the courtyard of a temple. Its leaves come to an end. His unripe fruit drops off, brought when its end has come to the end to the watercourse. It is cast into the water and carried away far from its place. The flame of fire is its winding sheet or shroud. But the Gurma, who sets himself by the side, he is like a large leafy tree planted in shining or fertile ground. Its blossoms, it doubles, it yields a fruit in the summer. It has its place before the face of its Lord. Its foliage or fruit is sweet. The shadow thereof is pleasant, and it is carried to an end, finally into the groves of the God. Fifth chapter. Make no encroachment on the dikes of the house of God. Commit no act of viciousness so that ye may obtain additional wealth. Make not to turn aside from his duty a servant of God. To do what is profitable to another man, say not, today is even as tomorrow. To the end or result of this will be like what? Tomorrow has yet to come, today has yet to pass away. The water flood is on the mouth of the surging waves. The crocodiles make themselves visible from the mud. The hippopotamus appear in the light from the water. The fish leap in the waters. The wolves gore themselves. The geese keep high festival. The restraining cords are cast loose. Now every girl of the house of God shall say, Great is the graciousness of Ra. O thou who art filled with silence, thou shalt find the life. Thy body shall be preserved in safety upon the earth. Thrust not aside the funerary monument on the boundaries of the Aku. Remove not the tombstone which is on the borders of the necropolis. When thou art marking out additional lands for the crops, commit no robbery by means of the cubit of the fields. When thou art assessing the bounds of the estate of the widow, the land that has gone back from the plow is the waste of a man's lifetime. He who cheats thee, himself belonging to the fields, is snarred in the counsels of inequity. He is fettered by the divine souls. Make thyself to see what he does upon the earth. He is a greedy robber of the helpless man, the deadly enemy who would work the work to overthrow thy body. Life is snatched away by the mere sight of his aspect. His house is the enemy of the town but his storehouses shall be swept away by a flood. His possessions shall be carried away from the hands of his sons and daughters. His goods shall be given to another. Take good heed concerning the treading down of the boundaries of the field, lest horrible calamity be brought upon thee. Likewise, make offerings to the God 
Von Souls of the Ahu occupied itself with the affairs of the boundaries of the Ahu, the ancestral spirits, or the blessed dead. Be kind to thyself, make thy body strong and happy, but take good heed to thyself in respect of Nebuchadnezzar. Drive not the furrows through the lands of another. Profitable to thee is the strength or well-being which comes by their mouth. Plow thou in the fields which thou findest to be thy own property. Take thou bread cakes from the storehouse of thy body. Better is one apt of land which the God has given thee than five thousand apps of land which thou hast gotten by fraud. Do not acquire the habit of passing the day in eating houses and places where roasted meat is sold. Do not acquire the habit of passing the day and tasting one pot of beer after another. Those who pass their time at the food store become tomorrow merely victuals. Better is the beggar who is in the hand of God than the rich who are safely housed in a comfortable dwelling. Better are the bread cakes of flour and water with a loving heart than rich meats that carry with them bickering and quarreling. Fashion not thy heart in such wise that it hankers after things of wealth, luxurious foods and apparel. Not unknowingly are the god of shoot of luck and destiny. Let not thyself abandon thy heart or mind to the things that are extraneous. Let every man have his hour. Let every man choose his own time for his own affairs. Form not the habit of ordering thyself to seek more than thou hast when thy own goods and possessions are in thy safekeeping. If valuable goods which have been obtained by robbery have been brought together by thee, they will not pass the night in thy hands. At daybreak, certainly, they will not be given in thy house. They will look at the place where they were, and most assuredly they will not be there. They have swallowed them themselves. Either the ground has opened its mouth and swallowed them straight away, and they have sunk down deep in the abyss thereof, or they have become a great broken heap through the rust or decay, or they have become submerged in the room for waste, or they have made themselves wings like the geese, and they have spread their wings and flown up into the sky. Make not thyself to take pleasure in rich treasures that have been obtained by robbery, while assigning and pretending to grieve for the man who has been plundered or the beggar. When the cheating of the Asiatics or the bowman departs from a man, his servants destroy them. If thou sailest with a robber, thou wilt be left in the stream, but the boat of the gur has a fair wind behind it. Accustom thyself to direct thy sincere prayer to the Aten, the god of the solar disk. When he is rolling up in the sky, saying, Grant to me, I beseech thee, strength and help. He will give to thee the things that are necessary for the life. Thou shalt be safe from anxious care. Bestow thy benefits or bounty on the bodies of the people, and thou shalt be applauded by all faces. Praise and exalt in the serpent. Spit upon a pep. Keep thy tongue from speech of lying or slander. Show thy kindness to people of humble condition. Find thy seat in the sanctuary of the house of God. The gifts made by thee shall be the cake offerings of thy Lord. Make thyself to be as if thou wast one of the blessed dead, as if thou wast a swart mummy in thy coffin. I'm going to read that again. Make thyself to be as if thou wast one of the blessed dead, and as if thou wast a swart mummy in thy coffin. Be thy strong for the divine souls, the will of God, to do his will. Make not an invocation to bring a, des a detestable thing upon people. Hide though thy affairs or plans of the fugitive slave, whether thou hearest the thing that is good or the thing that is evil. Treat it as a matter that is outside thy interest. Hearken not to it. I beseech thee to spread with thy tongue only the report of that which is good upon the earth. While it's as far as reports of evil are concerned, hide them in thy belly. Make not to be a friend of thine, the, hot, the hasty, hot-headed man, even though thou hast to go to his house frequently to have speech with him. Keep well thy tongue in making an answer to him that is thy chief at the time of guarding thyself against reviling him. Never permit his speech to fall upon thee like a lasso, so that thou must uncoil it by means of thy answer. Put questions to him or consult with him, answering like a subordinate in thy agitation, at the same time taking good heed not to propose him. The word that is uttered by a man with malicious intent is swifter to hurt than the wind that precedes the storm. This man casts to the ground. This, man's build, this man builds up with his tongue. He gives utterance to strings of words that carry destruction in them. This man makes an answer to the merits of a beating. For the burden or object thereof is to do harm. 
He traffics by means of a boat after the manner of other folk. He loads the boat with the discourse of inequity. He makes himself the ferryman of him that catches men in the net of words. Whether he is going away or whether he is coming back, he continues to chatter or gossip. Whether he is eating, whether he is drinking, even in his own house, his conversation returns to matters that are outside or have nothing to do with him. The day itself stands up and makes an accusation against his abominable deeds. His sons and daughter cry out, woe to themselves. The god Kenem Ra makes a process or brings a case against him. He is of the potter's will, worked by the devil tar. He mixes together needs material to destroy the hearts of minds of men therewith. He is like a wealth of one of the dogs, literally, wolves of the stable or farmyard, with his eye fixed jealously on the movements of his companions. He causes men and women to become enemies by his scandaling, mongering. He goes before every wind like the blast that goes before the sandstorm or whirlwind of the desert. He destroys the hair or skin of shoe. He gathers his tail, bends it round about him like the young crocodile, bringing it close to him ready for the daily sweep. His lips are the date serp. His tongue is a deadly dagger. A consuming fire blazes within his belly. Make no flights or attempts to fill or to please that fellow. Least thou bring calamity upon thyself. Tim chapter. Allow not thyself to be greeted as a friend among thy neighbors by the hasty, hot-headed man who is thy opponent. If thou doest, thy wilt thyself damage thy heart or mind. Make not thyself to say to him, Thou art praised with evil intent, there being terror in thy belly. Hold not conversation in the company of men of inequity, for that is an abominable thing to do before the Lord. Make not thy mind to be divided for the sake of thy tongue. Let all the plans and behavior have a sound foundation. Be weighty or dignified in the presence of people of lowly condition. Put thou thyself for safekeeping in the hand of God. God hates man who utters frivolous lying speech. The greatest abomination to him is the man who nourishes inequity in his belly. 11 chapter. Hanker not greedily after the things of the man whose food is daintly and spice, though thou art hungry for his bread. Now the food that is daintly or spice is a storm in the gullet or turns the stomach, and it makes the bowels to eject it. It turns the man who is a counselor into a man of inequity, and his sense turns itself away from his body, inasmuch as the evil nature or base appetite corrupts his disposition for well-doing. The evil in him destroys what is good. Be thou a creature of naught in the presence of thy chief, superior officer. Thou shalt acclaim him humbly in thy speech. Thy adultery remarks, they shall meet and turn aside his cursings. Thy homage, when smelling the earth, shall disarm his violence. When thou hast swallowed the mouthful of bread of a great man, thou shalt vomit it, and thou shalt be empty of the thy good containing dainty. Make thyself to understand or see the foresight of the glutton. He himself gathers together stays for the hunting nets. Every one of his servants is a beater for the hunting traps, and a strong man smites or kills in the slaughterhouse. If thou art undone or vanquished in the presence of thy chief, it will be a dis disgrace for thy subordinates or servants. Steer thou thy course away from the glutton forthwith. Observe him, at the same time avoiding the things which he offers to thee. Behave not like the greedy in respect of the things or foods of the nobleman, since the filling of the mouth with the bread of a great man is or is free to every comer. If he gives to thee for the growth, increase of his possessions, hate or reject what is his and keep safe what is thine. Make no un undertaking in company with the noisy, hot-headed man, or thou wilt be making thyself a friend of a man of moral inequity. Thou art sent on a mission to transport straw, hate or cast away or reject the weeds that are in it. If thine eyes sight upon a person who is engaged on a mission of danger, report it not, but dispatch him on his errand and let him return for another occasion. Make not men to affix additions to the roll register. This is an abominable thing to the Lord. Make not the word of one man of inequity to appear to be truth by any act of thine, while at the same time thou art supporting another man of inequity with thy tongue. Reckon not as no thing have come of value. By doing so, thou wilt falsify thy rolls or registers. If thou findest a great mass of hidden treasure in the possession of a poor man, make or divide it into three portions, release two portions, and let one remain with thee. Thou shalt find it like the ways of the life. Thou shalt lie down and sleep and pass thy whole night as safely as if it were today. 
Better is the praise approval with the love of men than the riches of wealth laid upon a treasure house. Better are the cakes of flour and water eaten with a loving mind or disposition than the strong meats eaten with strife and, and inequity. Remember not to exactly tessidence of a man when thou art striving to seek for his hand. If he says to thee, accept the things which I have brought, he is not one who has no. Cast not malign looks at him while it's bending down thy face, while it's turning away thy glance elsewhere. Greet him with kind words in thy mouth. Speak and salute him cordially. If he approaches thee, thy end comes. Make him not to go down into his former state. On another occasion, he can be brought. Do the thing that is right, and thou wilt attain it to a true state of being. Make no eraser in the registers on behalf of an encroacher, since the break of the Ibis god, Tehuti, is the finger of the scribe. Take good heed not to thrust it aside. Tehuti sits directing Hermopolis. His eye travels round about through the two lands, upper and lower Kemet. Since he observed the man who makes a slip with his finger, he will withdraw his benefactions and endowments according to what is right. If the scribe continues to make slips and mistakes with his finger, his son will not be decreed for employment. If thou wilt pass the days of thy life, these things being in thy heart, thy children, behold them. When you was reading a little bit of it, man, I mean, the, the literature that you read, I think it was, uh, it was on point, and I think more people need to hear that these people breaking stuff down and, and talking deep and in depth like this 4,500 years ago. And the way they was talking in the literature, you know, expressing themselves about atoms, the change and transformation of, 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 of the Ka and the Ba, you know, um, the importance of the Aku, which is the luminous beings of light, the luminous being of light, which is quantum activity, how the body, when it decomposes, you know, the deterioration process, how it all, different aspects of your being returns back to different processes of nature. 